Hey, what's going on, y'all? This is Demonic Intellect back once again to show you my PS2 collection. This is part three. So these are all games that I purchased within the past year. I've got so many new games that I ran out of rooms on my shelf that were parts one and two of my collection. Enough wasting time. Let's get right into it. So the first game is Taito Legends. So Taito Legends is a game that features, I believe, 29 arcade games like Space Invaders, Bubble Bobble, elevator action uh, but my favorite game on this has to be the ninja kids it's a beat-em-up where you play as ninjas but the rest of the games are okay too you should definitely buy this if you don't have this already so i already showed you parts two and three of the next game i'm about to get into which game am i talking about Sinosaga, saga of course this is a turn-based RPG that I can't wait to sink my teeth into. Uh, for years, I've only owned parts two and three. Now that I own the first game in the series, I can start playing it. So the female character on the cover is named Cosmos. And let me tell you, this is great character design right here. Look at those, those guns. Okay, the next game is Spider-Man Friend or Foe. Uh, this is a beat-em-up where you can team up with heroes and villains like uh, Venom, Dr. Octopus, Black Cat, Iron Fist, and I think Blade is in this one, made by Activision. Okay, now we have Resident Evil Outbreak. I believe this is the first Resident Evil game that is online and co-op. You can team up with your buddy and kill all the zombies and five scenarios I think you can choose from. There is a second game in the series, but I don't have that one. I think it's called Resident Evil Outbreak File 2. I think I found this at Goodwill one day. Uh, this is Time Splitters 2. This is a first person shooter where you can visit various time periods. And there is a large amount of characters you can play with in multiplayer mode. So yeah, this is a fun one. I used to think it was Vin Diesel that was on the cover. Kind of looks like them, right? Shadow Man 2 Second Coming. This is a sequel of a game that was originally on the PS1. Uh, it's also based off a comic book series. Oh, and I think I still have the receipts in this. How much did I pay for this? 15 bucks, not bad. So you go around town uh, punching humans by day. At nighttime or sunset, you turn into a skeleton and you start fighting demons and ghouls. You can travel in between the human zone and the dead zone. It's lovely. So this next game, I play all the time, day and night, and I'm lying. It's actually sealed. <laughs> this is Ratchet Deadlocked. I haven't played it yet. I don't know why I haven't opened this yet. Found this at Goodwill one day, and it's cool to see sealed PS2 games after all these years. Um, it looks like it's of a darker tone than the usual Ratchet and Clank games. So I can't wait to see how that is. First we had a Ratchet and Clank game, now we have a Jack and Daxter game. This is Jack X Combat Racing. Oh, uh, there's a glitch that happens when you go and auto save your game uh, that could corrupt your save data. I think they fixed it in the Greatest Hits version, but with this game you have to be careful when you go to save your game. Otherwise, this is a fun racing game, I recommend. This game has a darker tone too than the usual Jack and Daxter games. Okay, the next game is Red Ninja End of Honor. So this is a stealth action game where you play as a female ninja and she uses a Kuranai blade that's attached to this wire. You can hook and reel in your enemies. Now, to be honest, I didn't really enjoy this game. The forced camera angles make it unplayable. I could never beat it. Well, it's like Tenchu, but worse. It's an interesting thing about this game. Uh, you can actually seduce your enemies and kill them afterwards. I, I don't think I've ever seen that in a game. One Piece Pirate Carnival is like Mario your party but worse basically you play a bunch of mini games uh, it's based on the anime i don't think i've ever seen one single episode of this um to be honest the mini games have terrible controls i can only recommend this if you're a big fan of the anime or manga series um, it goes for cheap these days i got my copy for like 12 bucks 
Now we have Contra Shattered Soldier. I haven't played this full game, I only played the demo, and let me tell you, this is action packed, very fast paced. Now remember, I couldn't keep my eyes off the screen while I was playing it. This is a very fun run and gun game. I was barely able to pass the demo because I'm not good at these kind of games, but I still have fun with it. Okay, so Cold Fear is a third person horror survival game where you're stuck on a ship and you gotta shoot zombies. You can actually get seasick from the game as the waves crash into the ship and making the ship sway back and forth. I haven't played this yet, but I might play it for Spooky Month. I heard it's not that good as Resident Evil 4, but it came out the same year as that. I still wanna give it a try. Batman Rise of Sensu is a beat em up game where you can play as Batman, Nightwing, Robin, and I think Batgirl. It's an okay game. So you can choose to play solo or you can play with up to four players using the multi tap. So this next game is probably the weirdest game I have in my collection, hands down. This is Stretch Panic, where you have to pinch the body parts of the enemies. And the weird thing about these enemies is that they have very, very large boobies. You heard me right. Um, somewhere on their body is a weak point and you have to pinch it to defeat them. The weak points are usually their heads, but I ended up pinching other things to catch my drift. Is very cool. Go get it. You know what else is cool? I'm just playing. American Idol. This is very uncool. <laughs> this is a rhythm game where you, uh, hi Paula. Uh, this is a rhythm game where you have to mash the buttons as they appear on screen. Uh, there's a lot of pop songs in this game you can sing. Uh, Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, Britney Spears, you know, the usual early 2000s pop. And no, you cannot play as any of the judges. You can't play as Paula, Simon, or uh, Al Roker, whatever his name is. Speaking of singing, the next game is SingStar Pop, which I never played because you need a specific type of microphone to even play this. You can sing songs, yes, from the early 2000s, just like American Idol, but you actually have to use a designated microphone. I tried using the little mic that I have, but it didn't work. So I guess I got to look for another one to even play this. This next game I got from somebody on Craigslist. Yes, people still be on Craigslist. Uh, Dragon Ball Z Sagas. I never played it. Um, it came in this white case, but it's complete in box. I used to watch this anime back in the day, but I heard terrible things about this game. I guess I heard that it's the worst PS2 Dragon Ball Z game. I'll find out for myself when I actually played it for the first time. So while I watched Dragon Ball Z on Cartoon Network, I watched another show on Nickelodeon. The Avatar. This is the Burning Earth. This is a beat-em-up where you can play as Aang, maybe Zuko in Azula. I haven't played this entirely yet, um, but I think you can also play as Toph. Yes, Toph is that dude, the girl <laughs> in the show. She's so funny. Sorry, Sokka. I, like I said before, I haven't played this yet, but I can't wait to play as Toph because she's my favorite character from the show. So are y'all in the mood for basketball? Cause I have N B A B B B, -B Ballers. This is a street ball game where you have to create a character and play in tournaments to make your way to the top. And I don't even have the disc in here because I'm playing this for the very first time. It's currently in my PS2. Here's, here's the disc now, but I'm having fun with it. And this, I believe this is the first NBA game to feature a story mode. Ain't that something? So this next game is called Tokobot Plus and somebody wrote their initials right here. I hate when people do that. Anyway, you play as this explorer and you find a bunch of little robots that helps you explore dungeons and ruins. Uh, the cool thing about this game is that you can use the little robots to uh, make formations, form bridges, solve puzzles and fight other giant robots. I don't know why, but the art style reminds me of the more recent Mega Man games. I gotta make a new stack. Now we have Seek and Destroy and somebody else put their name on the cover of this. Who does that? Stop it. Get some help. Um, anyway, this is a game where you take control of Tank and it's kind of like a car PG. As far as I can tell, there are no humans in this game. Word bubbles appear above the tanks as if they're talking. You can customize your tank. You can make them different colors, add sonar, add radar to them, battle other tanks. Before we had World of Tanks, we had Seek and Destroy. We have a game that's based off of a movie 
fucked up thing you know what i never even seen this movie i've only seen clips of it matter of fact i never even played this game i believe this is a horror survival game I mean, it's got to be if it's based off of the movie. And apparently there's music by Saliva is what I'm reading on the back. All right, maybe I'll play this during Spooky Month. Rondia Extreme is another game I haven't played. This is a RPG. I think it's turn-based. This is made by Enix, and I believe this is the last Grandia game that the U.S. has gotten. I believe this game is rare. I found this at a yard sale, and I had to drive to the outskirts of my state to even find this. So I'm very thankful I was able to find this, even though I haven't even played this yet. I haven't played any of the games in this series yet. This is Ready to Rumble Boxing Round 2. I never played the PS2 version, but I played a little bit of it on the Dreamcast. These characters that you can play as are so off the wall, and the boxing moves that you can do are so exaggerated. The characters are crazy enough, but you can also select Michael Jackson. You can kind of see him on the back here. Uh, Shaq is in this. Also, Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton is in this. It's playable characters. Um, they tried to bring the series back in 2009 on the Wii, but that game isn't any good. I think it's called Ready to rumble boxing revolution the round two is where it's at are your pro wrestling return this game came out in like 2007 kind of late for the ps2 life i'm a casual wrestling fan and i didn't recognize any other wrestlers in this i think you can create one i think that's what they urge you to do even though there's like over 300 wrestlers in this to choose from the weird thing about this game is that it doesn't have a grab button where you can grab your opponent you just have to get close enough so the game grabs your opponent automatically you grab each other so i wrestle a couple of matches and it's pretty good it's pretty fun wwe crush hour is not a wrestling game it's a vehicular combat game that features the 2002 roster of wrestlers i believe this is one of the first wwe games after they changed it from wwf the wrestlers you can choose from the cars match their personality if i remember correctly rick flair had a sports car kane had a muscle car with flames painted on it and rikishi's uh, his vehicle was basically a steamroller with his ass painted on the back it's a beautiful thing street hoop this is another street ball game i actually have the sequel to this which i showed in part one um this is a game where you can play as a bunch of street ballers uh from the n1 mixtape series my favorite street ballers were always ao skip to my boom and escalate it's a cool game Hole is a breakdancing game that plays a lot like the DDR games. It's kind of easy. Oh, and it also makes use of the iToy. I really like the soundtrack. It features underground hip hop and old school hip hop. Nothing much else to it. Otherwise, it's just a DDR clone. Friends. Yeah, I know this is a weird game to have in my collection, but the girl that I was seeing at the time was into the show and I saw this at the local retro store. So I went ahead and picked this up. I invited her over so we can play this together, but she goes to me the next day. So now I'm just stuck with this game. I'm pretty sure I would have won, even though I haven't watched the show in years. But if there's any single ladies in the comments that wants to come over and play this with me, you're welcome to join me. Cal the Kangaroo Round 2 is a platformer that came out on the PS2, Xbox, and GameCube. And I believe it was released on Steam not too long ago. If I had to give my honest opinion about this, it's kind of generic when it's compared to other platformers that was out around the time. But it's nice to see older games get remade or remastered. So Rise of the Kasai is like a mixture between platforming, stealth, beat em up, and action. Pick one of four characters and you basically beat up the enemy. I believe one of the characters has a bird you can send to scout for enemies. It's pretty cool. I recently played the demo but haven't played the real game. Shinobi is a stealth action game where you, you know, you play as a ninja. You can complete missions. I haven't played this completely yet. I have the sequel, which I did show in part two called Nightshade, where you play as the female ninja. Both games are very cool looking. Now we have Muppets Party Cruise, which is basically like Mario Party, but you're playing as the Muppets. You're on a ship and you're playing a bunch of mini games. The mini games go by so fast. Uh, the game is easy and so forgettable. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted from eBay for very cheap. I was the only one who bid on it. Go figure. 
Now we have a good one. This is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. This is the last old school Need for Speed game. What I mean by that, the whole vibe changed after this game because Need for Speed Underground came out right after this. So in this game, you're racing and running away from the police at the same time while listening to Uncle Cracker on the radio. It's an experience unlike any other. Now let's get into some RPGs. We have Shiny Force Neo on the left and Shiny Force EXA on the right. I haven't beaten either of these games yet. I've only played them to make sure that they work. They kind of remind me of the Diablo games, but with anime scenes sprinkled in. The Shiny Force series has been alive since the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive days. They were turn-based strategy RPGs, but when they made it to the PS2, it was action RPGs. RPGs. The gameplay is very different and I'm not sure why these games aren't talked about more. They seem fine to me. I also have Shining Tears, but it's a disc only copy. I'm waiting to get the case in manual until I show that. So if there's ever a part four to this series, I'll just wait to show it there. And another platformer, Malice. This game had the potential to be something bigger. I remember uh, I remember Gwen Stefani from No Doubt fame was supposed to do the voice of the main character here, but for some reason that never happened. This is a platformer that's a little bit too easy, so you go around hitting things with your giant club, but it's still a good game. This almost came out for the Xbox as a lunch title, but for some reason they didn't have faith in a game like this game got pushed aside for more well-known titles like Dead or Alive 3, Project Gotham Racing, and Halo. Those games went on to sell millions of copies and Malice could have been one of them. Gauntlet 7 Sorrows is a hack and slash RPG. There are four characters you can choose from. Do with the axe here. I think that's the warrior and elf of uh, Valkyrie and I believe it's a wizard. I wasn't expecting this game to be fun, but it really is, uh, especially if you have a buddy you can play with because there's co-op. I just wish there were more characters to play as. Playing with the same four characters can get kind of old fast. The next game is NBA 06. And is this Stoudemire on the cover here? I haven't played too much of this. I just started story mode where they have you complete a bunch of drills, just shooting, dunking, you know, the basics. I think this also came out on a PSP as a launch title. Gotta make a new stat. Yakuza. I like this game because basically you're just walking down the road and beating people up. Oh, um, and you are hanging out with a little girl throughout all hours of the night. Uh, that part might sound weird, but it works. <laughs> the game is fun. I need to pick up the second game because I heard it's better and I love beat em ups. The next game is Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX 2. It's an alright game. Oh wait, I don't have the manual. Don't look. Don't look. Up until this point, every game I showed has been complete in box. Uh, but anyway, this is like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, except you're on bicycles. So you go from level to level, completing missions. It's kind of hard because you only have a two minute window to get everything done. It's still fun though. Another fun game was X-Men Legends. This is a beat em up and RPG. You pick your favorite mutants and beat up the bad guys. Jean Grey, Nightcrawler, and Storm were kind of OP. I said this game was fun, but it's also a bit grindy. You spend a long time grinding up your characters to make them stronger. Hopefully this next game isn't a grind fest. I haven't played it yet. I'm talking about X-Men Legends 2, Rise of Apocalypse. Is Magneto playable in this? I see him on the cover. I don't think he was playable in the first game. That would be tight if he is. I will make this game better than the first one automatically. This is another sealed game I have in my collection, Bombastic. I believe this is a puzzle game. I have never played this, but I believe this is a sequel of the PS1 game Devil Dice because the character on the back looks very familiar. I'll take this out of the plastic wrap soon. Can't wait to play this. Oh, here's an oncoming game you don't see in many people's collections. This is lifeline this is a game that is microphone compatible you have to give instructions to the main character with your usb microphone shooting the enemy examining items uh, the main character name is rio she's sassy she half listens <laughs> but when she does listen it can be pretty fun when she doesn't listen it's going to get on your nerves it's a horror survival game that takes place in space if you've never seen this game before, it can be pretty entertaining to watch other people play it. Which reminds me, if you want to see me play it, I uploaded my playthrough of this. Go watch it. Right now. Pause this video, I'll wait. Here's another uncommon game. 
Sugana Atonement. This is a turn-based RPG where the main character gets cursed. After stealing a forbidden treasure, he basically gets turned into a ghost and he has to possess people in the nearby villages and perform deeds in order to be whole again. I haven't even beaten this game yet, I only played it to make sure that it worked, but I will be streaming the full game real soon. I had no idea what Sugana even means, but maybe I'll find out when I actually played the full game. We got a twofer, Wave the Samurai and Wave the Samurai 2. One from BAM, one from Capcom, and you guessed it, you play as a samurai, you can learn new attacks, you can build up your sword, you can even break your sword. There's branching storyline paths, there's multiple endings, and I didn't even know this, but Samurai Western is a spin-off game of the series, which I already showed you in part two. I believe there's only four games in the way the Samurai series, but the only one I played was Samurai Western, but eventually I'll get to these two. Van Helsing is a hack and slash and platformer where you can rack up a big combo, taking on hordes of enemies, very reminiscent of Devil May Cry. It's based on the movie of the same name. So Hugh Jackman star as the title character and you can beat this in a matter of a few hours. It's very short, but it's still fun. So I played that game during Halloween season and I also played this one too. Extermination. This is a horror survival game. It kind of looks like Metal Gear Solid and Resident Evil combined. So the main character is stuck at a facility and they have to kill people and animals that's been taken over by a virus and they become mutated monsters as a result. This game doesn't get talked about a lot, but I had fun with it. For a game that came out in 2001, the graphics look very good. Usually these horror survival games on the PS2 goes for a lot, but this is the exception. This game is very affordable. Mark Echoes Getting Up is a game based around graffiti. You go around the city tagging your name all over the place. Uh, you can beat up rival crews and cop. You can also sneak by them and spray your graffiti. This game has an amazing soundtrack if you like rock and hip hop. Unlike Jet Set Radio, this game is very serious, very story driven, and you're not on rollerblade. This is Chaos Legion. This is almost like Devil May Cry. It's also made by Capcom. I read somewhere that they used some of the ideas that they didn't want to use in Devil May Cry and put it into this game. I haven't played this yet, but the bit that I played was very fun. Kind of repetitive though. We have yet another Capcom title, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter. This is a RPG series where the main character can turn into a dragon. In these Breath of Fire games, there's always the main character whose name is Ryu and the supporting character named Nina. This is the last Breath of Fire game that the US has ever gotten. There are six games in the main series and you can consider this game to be Breath of Fire 5. I haven't beaten this 100% yet, but it looks like it's a dungeon crawler and you'll be spending most of your time on the ground. Crimson C2 can be considered an RPG as well, but mostly it's a hack and slash and third person shooter. So in this game, you go from planet to planet, completing missions, looking for rare items, killing alien monsters. You can use a sword, you have a gun, you can also use magic. You can even freeze time. The graphics are really amazing. Some of the best I've seen on this system actually. This is the sequel, but the first game is on the Xbox, which I need to pick up. Twisted Metal Black is a classic, vehicular combat at its finest. I do not have the manual, but don't worry about that. My favorite character was always Axel, even though I wasn't even that good at this game. I enjoyed the story. This game has some of the craziest endings I've ever seen in the game. If you haven't played this or seen the endings, you should definitely look them up on YouTube. Capcom Classics Collection is a compilation title that has 22 games on it. To be honest, I only got this because Street Fighter 2 is on here. That's the only game I beat. Oh, and 1942 as well. Other games included on this is Ghosts and Goblins, Ghouls and Ghosts, and Super Ghouls and Ghosts. But I'll never play those because those are too hard. Are y'all tired of Capcom titles yet? Well, too bad. We have Shadow of Rome here. So in this game, you take control of a gladiator. He primarily fights with a sword and shield, but you can perform suplexes on enemies. And there's another character you can play with that's using stealth sections, but it's lame because you can only knock people out and sneak around. You can't kill anybody when you're doing stealth. It's still worth a playthrough. Buy this now. Shadow of Rome, the beat em up stealth action game. We have yet another Capcom game, Killer7. This is a third person shooter. You get to play as an assassination group. 
they're called the killer seven but the weird thing is is that it's actually one guy he has seven split personalities and you get to transform into one member of the assassination group this game is very stylish it has cell shaded graphics it has an amazing soundtrack it's kind of underrated it's worth a playthrough Where's my X-Men fans at? Wolverine's Revenge. This is a game where you take control of Wolverine and you try to figure out how he came to be. This is a stealth and beat-em-up game. You're wandering around the lab that Wolverine was created and experimented on, trying to piece together his past. I'm not really a fan of stealth games, but this is pretty fun. So the next game is Kids Next Door Operation Video Game. I don't know if this is good or not. I haven't played this one yet. I remember liking the show, the only thing I know that it's a platformer. Has anyone in the comments ever played this one? Let me know if it's worth playing or not. Oh man, I should have showed this before Kids Next Door. Well anyway, here's X-Men Origins Wolverine. It's similar to the other Wolverine game that I just showed you, but it's supposed to be more violent and there's more platforming sections in it. It's based on the movie of the same name and I remember not liking the movie. Hopefully the game is better. Okay, here's another game that's based off of an anime. This is Naruto Uzumaki Chronicles 2. I beat the first one, the first Uzumaki Chronicles, but I haven't beaten this one yet. Hey, this isn't the manual. Uh, this is actually the packing slip. I got this from eBay. I only played the first level. The only thing I remember is that you had to save a burning village and this is a beat em up. I think there is a two player mode that has head to head fighting. I need to finish this because it was fun, the bit that I played at least. Okay, we have another compilation title. This is Sega Classics Collection. It features a few arcade games from Sega. Uh, my favorite games on this was Outrun and what's that alien game? Uh, let me think. It's called Alien Syndrome where you uh, shoot the aliens and save all the hostages. That was fun. Also, I like Bonanza Brothers. Um, other games on here were Monaco GP, Space Harrier, and Golden Axe. There was a Golden Axe beat em up that I played for a little bit. This is cheap and very fun. Okay, now who's in the mood for pinball? Because I got Flipnik, Ultimate Pinball. And yes, this is another Capcom game. <laughs> this game is very unrealistic. It's not the standard pinball game and I love it. Uh, I remember there being a jungle level where you can feed bananas to monkeys and I also remember you can make the pinball bounce and hit UFOs. This game can get pretty crazy and that's why I like it. This is PK Out of the Shadows. This is a game where you take control of Donald Duck. He has an alter ego that's a superhero. This is a platforming game, which I remember being easy. I haven't beaten this completely yet. Oh, uh, Donald Duck has a normal speaking voice in this. And most people forgot Donald Duck had a spinoff series. Uh, there was this game called Going Quackers, and that was this game, PK Out of the Shadows. <laughs> I had too many PS2 games. Forgot I even had this one. Uh, this is Jack and Daxter. Is this the last Jack and Daxter game? Chronologically, I mean. I remember flying a plane in the beginning, but that's all I can remember. I haven't beaten this one yet either. This game also appears on the PSP, and I don't think we got a new Jack and Daxter game after this one. It never made it to the PS3, 4, 5. We need Jack and Daxter back in our lives. So this next game is very misleading if you're judging it by the cover. You see these Charlie's Angels looking girls? They're not even in this game. This is a space shoot 'em up Mobile Light Force 2, but I think it's called something different in other territories. Um, I think one of the titles is Gunbird and another title is Shikigami something. I can't remember. What I do remember is this being your average shmup. Oh, here's a cool game. This is the first Dragon Guard game. So the main character is at war, the human on the cover and he's fighting the enemy. The enemy is about to kill the dragon and you save the dragon's life and you befriend each other. You can ride on top of the dragon shooting fireballs and it kind of plays like Dynasty Warriors. Taking down enemy fleets with your sword and traveling via dragon. Can't get any better than that. Need for Speed Carbon. Uh, this is the collector's edition that includes the, or the making of. I haven't played this full game, but I remember playing this demo and it was fun. 
So this game came out right after Underground 2 and right before Pro Street, I believe. I need to hurry up and play this full game. It's been a while since I played a racing game. Rayman 3, Hoodlum Havoc. This is a platformer where you play as a... What is Rayman anyway? He has floating limbs, which is weird. I never played a full game of Rayman, even though I have it in my collection. I only played this demo, and I remember it being pretty basic. There were sections that you can fly, some kind of aircraft. I didn't know what I was doing, but I ended up lucking out and beating the demo. Galarian's Ash. This is a horror survival game. Uh, you play as this guy named Rion. He has these powerful psychic abilities, and he has to take out this group called the Galarians. And they have unique abilities of their own. If you've ever seen that one anime movie, Akira, his powers are very similar to that main character. This is the sequel. Uh, the first Galarians came out on PS1. I think the sequel takes place six years after the original game. We have Suikoden 3. This is a RPG that features three main protagonists and I do not have the manual. Darn. So you play as these three characters separately but their plot connects and their stories intertwine with each other. You can recruit a lot of characters. I haven't played this full game but I played the demo within the past year and it was a lot of fun. I can hardly recall any of the events that happened in the demo but I remember liking the female character lead the best. So I showed this game last time but I didn't have the disc but as you can see, I do now. This is Samurai Jack Shadow of a Coup. And this game is a platformer action type. The game isn't that long. You play as the uh, cartoon character Samurai Jack and you basically do all the things that he does in the episodes. Similar to what they would do in this next game. This is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 Battle Nexus. And this is a beat em up platformer. You pick your favorite turtle and you beat up the enemies. There's nothing more to it. But that's a bad thing as the gameplay can get repetitive. It's the way it is in most beat em up. It's kinda hard to avoid doing that. Spoiler alert, you can unlock the original arcade game of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is the better game. So it's kinda worth it. Don't tell Peter about this next game. Whiplash. This is a platformer where you play as a weasel and a rabbit and the weasel straight up abuses the rabbit throughout the whole game. So they're chained to each other and the main objective of the game is to escape the testing facility. The weasel uses the rabbit to swing from platform to platform. He attacks enemies with the rabbit which provides unique gameplay. This next game makes for a unique adventure as well. This is Gun, and pretty much you're playing in a western. Not too many games like this for the PS2, as this predates Red Dead Revolver. You bust guns, you save Native Americans, you herd cattle, and you play poker. Gun, aka Cowboy Simulator. This next game can be referred to as a sticky ball simulator, Katamari Damacy. You roll up in a ball, and you roll up anything in your path. That includes people, animals, trees, buildings, statues, anything. And I kind of hate that I got into it late as I was aware of it when it initially came out, but I just now played it within the past couple of years. And now we have Lagaya 2, which is the sequel to Legend of Lagaya, which is on the PS1. This is a fresh RPG that I haven't even played yet. I played the original Legend of Lagaya, but I'm not sure if this is good as the first game. And I don't think any of the characters that appeared in Legend of Lagaya appears in this one. So it could be a whole new adventure. Baroque is a Atlas RPG that's lesser known from Atlas fans. Uh, this is a dungeon crawler, but I think the dungeons that you crawl in are randomly generated. I think the main character here is an angel and they lost their memory, just like almost every other video game protagonist. I wonder if this game has a sewer level. If you made it this far, congratulations, pat yourself on the back. This is the very last game of this video, and this one's a doozy. This is a Atlas RPG, Devil Summoner 2, Ida Kuzunoha vs King Abaddon. The box is broken that it came in, but the game is still sealed, and it has a little Jack Frost plushie of the main character. And I'm not ashamed to say that I sleep with the plushie every night. So I traded a bunch of DS games in order to get this. I don't really play DS. In this game, you play as a detective who hangs out with a black cat who can fight using a sword and you can fight using demons. Um, if you play the Persona games, these demons will look very familiar as they appear in that game. And there are a few exclusive demons 
that appeared only in this series. So I found this out right after I put all of my games away. So Atlas produced a certain number of copies of this game and they put the number on the back of the box. Uh, my copy number is 31,026. If you have this game, let me know in the comment what your number is. Well, guys and girls, that's it. That was part three of my PS2 collection video. Who knows if there'll be a part four as I'm running out of shelf space, but we will see. So until then, stay safe, stay yourself, and stay tuned for more. Catch y'all on the next video.